Let's go to Michelle in Boston. Hey, Michelle, what's going on? Hi, John. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Um, so my question today um, is how do I work with my husband to help him battle um, his severe, severe trauma from his childhood um, and the PTSD and anxiety and depression that he's left with today even with one of his abusers still in his life. Hmm. Um, and then also how do we connect on a spiritual level um, for his healing when some of a lot of his trauma came from people who were related to his church and hmm. religious people and that genre. Ugh, um, I, I feel like he holds back because of it. Well, and yeah, of course we can't t- and we can't really connect on that level, but mm-hmm. even just so, even so he's just in such a bad place yeah. in his life. And this person is still around and it, there's, it, we just seem like stuck. Yeah. So is your husband going through treatment of some sort? Is he, is he on a healing journey or is he just getting through every day, just grinding it out? He is on a healing journey, but to be completely honest, he was forced to, um, okay. a couple years ago, his body kind of turned on him. Yep. And he started what we thought were allergic reactions turned into panic attacks and his anxiety was taking over his body. Um, So it, it basically ate its way out and now it's a, it's a daily battle for him. Um, He used to be completely honest before me, he used drugs and alcohol to cope. Yeah, of course. Um, Why, why is, why is an abuser still in his life? Um, he has a, a narcissistic mother. Okay, she's. Uh, did she abuse him as a kid? Physically abused as a kid. He was also sexually abused by other others. So. He, and did mom know about traumatic. that growing up? Not growing up, um, but she was very physically abusive to him um, after her. Um, after she got divorced from their father. Mm-hmm. Um, Probably from like five on, he was physically abused very badly. Um, but she's so narcissistic uh, and gaslighting that she denies it. Um, so denies here's the deal. even ever using a belt on him or anything. And he's he's a very in a very lonely place in yeah. his head. You know. Um, so, so imagine this. Imagine there is a bear that eats part of your arm and leg as a, as a kid, as a child, right. just gnaws it off. Blood, mess, bones, breaking all of it. And then that bear just lives in your living room forever. Right. Your body would never heal and you'll just die young. Right. And until he decides to, he's got to create significant, strong, disconnected boundaries from his mom so that he, until he gets that bear out of his living room and creates somewhat of a safe place where his heart can stop racing and his head can stop going, hey, she's right there. She's right there. Right. He's not going to um, heal. We did move. Um, so we did move away from where we're a couple hours away. Yeah, from and that can make it worse. That can make it worse. Still, because then the yeah. communication's electronic. And that gaslighting. Right. And that, she's the worst. Exactly. And so he needs to take his phone out and block her today. Mm-hmm. No more contact. It is her birthday too, so. Well, happy birthday. Right. He just he just uh, wrote to me a little while ago saying he did call her, and he good. He's. I feel like he's my child because I'm like I'm trying to hold up the boundaries. He, hey, he is. He, You've he's right. become your kid, and your mom, mm-hmm. and that's not a way to hold on to a marriage. And my guess is you're getting exhausted. And you love him like crazy and you're getting exhausted. 
Because I'm also, I'm, I'm scared for my kids. Yeah, of course. They really, they really love their grandmother. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I mean, it's all part of the game, you know? Your she grandmother doesn't, she doesn't is even realize that her love isn't real. A you know, bear. So. Yeah. That tried to kill your husband. She right. does not get access to your kids for a long time. And listen, my kids love people that give them candy. I'm still discriminating against about who they're involved with. Right. Right? And you've got this picture, and it's an incredible one, of your mother-in-law coming around and being this awesome grandma, and we all go play. That is over. It's it's really creepy. It is. It's scary, and it's over. And you Mm -hmm. have to draw that boundary, and your husband's got to draw that boundary. And when it comes to spiritual connection, it wasn't a bear. It was a a, a firing squad. It right. was a torture chamber for your husband. And so any sort of faith healing is going to have to be unbraided from the people that hurt him. And so right. trying to connect with him in the torture chamber is going to be a challenge for a season. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're going to feel lonely because you want to connect with him on a spiritual level and you want to raise your kids in a certain way. And he's going to continue to remember that's where I was sexually abused. That's not safe. Yeah, we can't, he can't even go back to his, where we grew up, he he can't even go back. Of course, Um, of course. It's been been slowly happening for a long time and um, he's, he he just, he, I'm realizing, like, I do a lot of research and I try to find things that I just sent him a thing about triggers with his PTSD because he goes, we don't even know what sets him off some days, um, but I know it could be literally anything. It could be a song. It could be a um, a way someone, something said, a smell, a this or that. So, you know, he goes into these breakdowns and has a full-on panic attack. And, um, you know, I, well, I'm, I'm just trying to get him out, you know, help him out and help him through it. And so he, here's um, the thing, here's the thing. mm -hmm. Number one, I'm so sorry, Michelle. This is so hard. So hard. And you are a strong, strong woman. He's lucky to have you in his life. And you are also his mom now too. And you were trying to solve this and you can't solve it. You can't fix him. I'm telling you right now, 1000% chance, not a doubt in my mind. If he wants to heal from this trauma, he can. No question about it. It will be a gauntlet. He will walk through hell and back and he will need somebody strong like you by his side. But he's got to do the walk on his own. You can't lay in this bed with him. You can hold his hand while he's in it, but you can't do it for him. And if he wants to get to the bottom of, Vander Kolk says, trauma is not what happened. It is our body's response in the present to things that happened in the past. Right. So until he decides, I want to regain control of my body in the present. I cannot heal the fact that my mom, the one woman on on the planet who was supposed to take care of me, abused the crap out of me. I can't fix, I can't change that. I can't change the fact that the one safe place I should be able to go to is with my faith community took my innocence away. They stole that from me. They sexually abused me. You can't change that. What I can change is how my body in the present responds to things that happened in the past. And that's what healing trauma is. But he's got to decide that. Right. And you can't make it. It's so hard with the mother. I know. I know. That's why Uh, she's got, you got to get the bear out of the living room first. The body's never going to heal. It can't. She keeps biting him, scratching him. Right. And then at the same time, your kid hurt your kids. Or on that bear's back having the time of their life, just playing, playing, playing. 
Right. You got to get that bear out of the living room. She has cashed in. She's out. She doesn't get to be mom for a season. Right. And then she, and then she turns that around on us. It doesn't matter. She is an abuser. Right. I don't care what right. she says. Right. She gets no votes. She yeah. gets no right. votes in my house. I don't care what she turns around. I don't care what she says. She is, does not exist. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, say it. Say it. it. She it, doesn't get a vote in my house anymore. You're right. She doesn't get a vote. In my doesn't. house anymore. Say it with conviction. You're a powerful <laughs> boss and mom. <laughs> right. Would you, would you let some stranger, some strange man, just come live in your living room? And your husband walks in and he would just punch your husband in the face. And then he'd hand your kids some candy. Would you allow that? Right. No. No, you wouldn't. You'd go to war for mm-hmm. your husband. You'd go to war for those kids. And just because it's it's his mom doesn't make it. It makes it more evil, not less. It makes it more right. painful, more hurtful. Mm-hmm. And your husband feels trapped. And the moment he unplugs from mom will be the first day he starts to get well. Okay. Because his body is continuing to fight and fight and flee and run and freeze from a threat mm-hmm. that he's been under for 30-something years. Right. And it's time right. to get the bear out of the living room. And you can heal from a faith community for sure, but he's mm-hmm. going to have to walk through hell to get there. It's going to be hard. And it may look different than you and your fantasy and your in, in the world, you the picture you have. It may look different ultimately. Right, right. Because they stole there's, from him. Um, yeah, my best friend is his sister, mm-hmm. and his so, um, and in the past, the sisters have been used as weapons by the mom. So I don't ever want to hear about your yeah. mother-in-law right. ever again. Right. right. I know. I know. Yeah. Okay. And tell the sister. Tell your best friend. Mom's not welcome here anymore. Oh my gosh! Are you serious? Yes, not welcome. She's an abuser. I for sure am not letting my little kids around her, and I am going to do everything I can to keep my husband out of that woman's presence so that his body can finally recognize that he's safe. And I'm going to go back to being his lover, his partner in life, his best friend. I'm going to stop being his mom. I'm going to quit being his mother, and I'm going to create a well home, a safe home. With him, he's going to play a part in this. And he's going to decide, I'm worth being well. And I'm worth being completely plugged in and connected with my kids. I'm worth being completely plugged in and having a reckless, wild love with my wife. And he's going to have to learn how to do that. Because the first woman didn't love him, she abused him. The faith community didn't love him, it abused him. His sisters are a mess. And it's going to be tempting for you to keep punishing mom, to keep going back to mom. I don't care about her. She doesn't get a vote. She's done. And this is hard. I'd love, love, love for you to give us a shout back. And I'd love to talk to your husband. Both of you all on the phone at the same time, that'd be awesome. I'd love to just listen to his story and walk alongside him. But remember these three things. You cannot fix him. You can love him. You can stay physically connected to him. You can hold him. You can look him in the eye and say, I love you. But you can't fix him. He has to decide, I want to be well. And by the way, he's not broken. He needs healing. He's hurt. He's not broken. The second thing is get mother-in-law out. She gets no more votes. Done. Get the bear out of the house. Number three, I want you and your husband. You've got to. You, Michelle got to put this fantasy picture down of what you've created, of this perfect life. It's different now. It's different. I want you and him to go co-create what this thing's going to look like. And you're going to do it season by season by season. What's the next six months going to look like for us? Is it summer? Is it winter? Is it spring or or, or, or fall? What's it going to look like? And we're going to slowly rebuild this thing. And we're going to paint a picture together. And it sounds all cheesy. It's not. Y'all have to excavate everything and rebuild something totally new. 
that doesn't include mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, Michelle, he's so lucky to have you. He's so lucky to have you. Thank you so, so much for your call.